Welcome to this one chart video tutorial on how to manage documents in the patient chart for the medical student role. Today, we will go over finding, reviewing, adding, editing, and erroring documents. Additionally, we will go over the specific process you must follow for managing documents within one chart as a medical student. Before we begin, let's review the St. Vincent's Medical Center policy when it comes to medical student notes in the electronic medical record. First, any note or document you add to the chart is not considered part of the patient's official medical record. Your documents are for educational purposes only, and your resident or attending physician whom you are assigned to is not to use any part of your note other than the histories or review of systems. They are not to copy and paste any other part, and this has been explained to them. If they were to do so, the medical center would fall out of CMS compliance and be subject to fines and legal action. Additionally, there is a specific line of text that they have been instructed to include in all documents created by you, the medical student, indicating that the documentation is to be used for educational purposes only. Before a document or note that you create can be signed, it first has to be sent to your resident or attending for review and approval. We'll cover this in detail shortly. Second, when adding a document, there is one and only one type of document you will choose, and that is the medical student notes type. There are a variety of templates you will be able to use, but only that one particular type. The reason for this is this type drives your document to a specific folder for all medical student documentation. Third, you are responsible for the documents and or notes that you create. If you save a note and do not sign it and forward it to your resident or attending, nothing will happen to that note and it will just sit in the patient's chart. Any document in a saved state will show up as a deficiency within medical records, so it's imperative that you manage your documents appropriately and timely. Let's begin by searching for our patient, establishing a relationship, and then opening the patient chart. Begin by accessing your recent list of patients and select your patient by name. You could also navigate to the white search box to enter the patient name or click on the magnifying glass icon which allows for a global search. When the global search pop-up opens, you can identify the patient by name, medical record number, or FIN or financial number. All of these processes have been covered in previous tutorials. Refer back to the patient search and relationship management tutorial if needed. I'm going to select my patient from my list of five most recent patients by clicking on the drop-down arrow and selecting my patient. Next, as I am signed in as a medical student, when the Assign a Relationship pop-up displays, I'm going to select Medical Student as the relationship. Remember, never select the X Emergency Access relationship. Complete by clicking OK. Once the patient chart is open, navigate to the Table of Contents and select the Documentation tab. Notice that you immediately see a list of previously completed documents of all types. These are available for your review. To review a document, simply select the document and it will open to the right. You may also select the Notes tab from the Table of Contents to review and find documents using a series of available filters such as Date, Type, and Performed By. Notice that by selecting the Type filter, you will see the folder specifically for medical student notes. To review the contents, simply double-click on it, and you will see a list of items displayed in date order. Double-click on the date item, and you will see the note appear to the right. To add a new document, we will once again navigate back to the Documentation tab within the Table of Contents. Click the Add button to the right-hand side of the Documentation tab, or click the Add button in the top left portion of the Documentation area of the screen once that screen displays. When the new note window opens, immediately notice the required field in yellow. Click the drop-down arrow and select the Medical Student Notes. You will have noticed that this is the only option to select as this is the only note type appropriate for a medical student. Do not use any other type of note even if shown otherwise. Navigate to the Note Templates section of the screen on the right-hand side and search for a template you want to use, such as an admission HMP, by typing in Admission. Notice your search immediately narrows the list. Once you find a template you know you will be using, click the star icon and save this as a favorite. Notice the Favorites tab now shows 1 in parentheses. If I were to close out of this function by clicking the X next to New Note, 
and then reinitiate the process by clicking again on Add and selecting a type of medical student notes. Now when the template list displays, I can click on Favorites and choose one from that list. To search for another type of template, navigate back to the All tab, and once again in the search field, we'll type in Progress to search for a progress note. Notice the list has now decreased, and we see a progress note template displayed. By selecting that and clicking on the star, I now save that as a favorite, and my counter has now increased to two, indicating I have two favorites available. Always remember to clear your search field once you're done searching for templates, otherwise your most recent search criteria will remain and control what is displayed on the screen for you. We'll begin by selecting the defaulted selection of progress note after having already selected a type of medical student notes over on the left portion of the screen. We'll continue by clicking on OK. When the note opens, notice that certain sections will automatically pre-populate with the most recent data, such as the section for assessment slash plan. For other sections, you have the ability to pull data into the document using what is referred to as a dot phrase. The system comes with a library of dot phrases to use. To access this library, select a category in the note itself and enter a dot or a period. A list of available dot phrases displays. Those with an asterisk at the end are system defined. Scroll through the list to find an appropriate topic. As I am in the review of systems category, I will scroll through the list until I find an appropriate phrase for review of systems. When I do, I will double click on it and notice that the most recent information associated with this category will automatically pull into the document. Notice that a previously defined review of systems outline has automatically been pulled into our document. For other sections, you may not be presented with any available space to enter data into. If there is no line immediately available to begin entering data, place your cursor next to the category name and notice the icons that appear. Click the one that looks like a left arrow or a carriage return and select this. A new line appears ready for you to input data. Click into the line and we can again search for an available dot phrase. As I'm in the vitals section, I'm going to scroll through the list until I find an appropriate dot phrase pertaining to vital signs. When I do, I will double click on the item. And in this particular instance, by double clicking on the vital signs, the system returned a message that says no qualifying data available. Had there been data available, it would have automatically pulled into this category for you. You also have the ability to create your own dot phrases, but this will be covered in detail in another tutorial session. If you wish to remove a single line within a group, simply put your cursor where you wish to begin deleting and remove the text as you would in any other type of document. To remove an entire section, put your cursor to the right of the group until you see the X display and click the X to remove the entire section. As in any other word processing document, you have the ability to undo your last action by navigating to the top portion of the screen and clicking on the undo arrow and notice that what I had just previously deleted is returned to the screen. To periodically save your results or to save your document, click the save button at the bottom of the screen and continue to work on your document. If you wish to save and close the document, click the save and close button. Saving the document will not make it available to any other users. This function only lets you see the document until you sign it and send it to your covering resident or attending physician for approval. If you click on Cancel, you have the opportunity to discard all of your recent changes and exit the document. Notice, since I had previously selected the Save option, the Save and Save and Close buttons are now grayed out or dithered. These will once again become available once I click into another section and start typing. When you feel you have completed your document, click the Sign slash Submit button. You are then brought to the Sign Submit Note pop-up where you must identify the resident or attending who you are assigned to. Notice that the Submit button is dithered or grayed out as this will not become active until you identify the resident or attending physician that you report to. Click into the Provider Name field to begin your search. Begin entering the last name of the physician you wish to send the document to for signature. Notice a list of names displays automatically without having to initiate a search. 
scroll through the list until you find the name of the physician you are looking for. Once you find the physician, select the name and click OK. The name now displays within the Recipients section of the screen. At this point, you may click the physician name, which will allow you to select the star to add this as a favorite contact. Notice that the name then moves into the contacts at the far left after clicking on the star to add to favorite. If you want this to be your default, click on the check mark under the default column. The sign radio button is automatically defaulted. You must identify at least one physician to sign the document, otherwise you will not be able to proceed. Complete the process by clicking on the submit button. You are then returned to the documentation window where you'll see the note that you have just recently completed and sent to the physician for signature and it happens to be displayed in italics. Refresh your screen and notice now the name of the document is no longer in italics. To error a document that you have created, as you can only error out your own documents, from the Documentations tab from the Table of Contents, locate the document you wish to indicate as an error from the list of available documents. Navigate to the In Error icon at the top of the screen and select this option. When you are presented with the In Error comment pop-up, record the reason that you are erroring this document. It is important to note that once this step is completed, your document is then recorded as in error report and you will not be able to undo this. We'll continue by clicking OK. You are then prompted to continue viewing the document if you wish, which will show you the new indication in red as well as the comment that you recorded. It is good to point out here that using the documentation band from the table of contents will display all the documents for a patient regardless of status. However, should you choose to use the notes band, you may not immediately see those documents recorded in error. To have these documents display, you will need to navigate to the documents menu at the top of the screen and select the filter in error documents option if there is a check mark next to it. This is indicated that error documents are being filtered out of the display. Having selected that check mark to remove it now allows us to view documents that were recorded in error. Notice by double clicking on the medical student notes, I now see two documents that have been recorded in error. We'll now navigate back to the message center as this is the primary communication screen where you can manage documents that you've saved and worked on that may need further attention. It's also the first screen that you see when you've signed into OneChart. We can return here by navigating to the buttons at the top of the screen and selecting Message Center. Remember, anytime you access one of the buttons at the top of the screen to return to a previous function, you always want to click on the refresh to make sure that you're seeing the most recent information. Notice the Save Documents section. Selecting this option will display a list of documents that you have created that are still in a saved status. By double-clicking on one of the documents, it immediately presents the document to you in a pending or preliminary status. You have the ability to continue working on the document by selecting the Modify button at the top of the page, or you can in-error the document from here as well by selecting the red X. Additionally, if you wished to have your document reviewed prior to signing, navigate to the Action pane at the bottom of the screen and select the checkbox next to Additional Forward Action. Follow that by selecting the drop-down for the Review option, and this will allow you to send this on to your resident or attending for review. Next, identify the resident or the attending physician who is covering you to have the document document forwarded to. We'll use the previous process by clicking into the yellow required field for the user. I'll type in the last name of our physician that we're going to forward this to. Click on the binoculars. When the address book search window displays, click on the scroll bar to scroll through a list of available options that met the criteria that you typed in. If you don't see the appropriate physician listed, notice that there's a more button that we can click on. We'll find the physician from the list displayed, select the name, Click on the Add button to bring it over to the right-hand side of the screen to the Send To box, and when the name is displayed in the Send To box, click on OK. Notice the name now displays in the field which we began searching in. And to complete this process and send this on to the physician who is responsible, we'll click on OK and Close, which actually closes the document, clearing it out as it has now been sent to the physician for review. Once again, we'll click on the Refresh. 
There are no further documents requiring our action at this time, so this process is now complete. For another example, to simply take your document and immediately send it onto your physician for signature and approval, simply take your document and navigate down to the Sign slash Submit button and select this. From here, you'll get the Sign slash Submit note pop-up where you'll be able to specify the physician whom you wish to send the document to for signature. Immediately notice on the right side of the screen under the Recipients section, should you have a user listed that you do not wish to send the document to, just put your cursor into the area of that user's name and you can always select the X to remove the recipient from the list. Additionally, should you wish to have the remaining user specified as a favorite, simply navigate to the star which is located to the left side of the user's name and select this, and notice now that that particular physician or user now displays under the contacts section on the left-hand side of the screen. If this was not the user that you wished to send your document to, you could always remove that particular user from your recipients list and proceed to the provider name lookup field where you could look up the name of the doctor that you wished to send the document to using processes that were previously discussed. To complete this, we will click on the submit button to send this on to the provider for signature. We are returned to the list of documents in reverse chronological order and as always, we'll navigate to the Refresh button and refresh our screen. And you'll notice that we have our most recent document at the top of the list. I notice that the result status currently states unauthorized because the physician has not yet signed this document. Once the note has been signed and you navigate back to the Documentation tab, notice that the physician has signed off on the note that the medical student had sent. We now see that the result status states that it's in a verified status as well as we see that line of text which has been entered by the physician indicating that this is a medical student note. This concludes the tutorial for documentation management for the medical student.